Bonsoir, welcome to the newcomers and welcome back for the others. Uh, this is a fan fiction called Short Straw, uh, written by Paint on the Sky. Uh, it is a Snamion um, fan fiction, so if you do not like the pairing Snape Hermione, um, you can go and listen to something else. Uh, let's go for chapter one. Oh, before the disclaimer, neither the world or the characters are mine. I merely borrowed to the to have a bit of fun. When I am finished, I will return them slightly used. All right, chapter one. Hermione glanced down at the list of tasks before them and had a nagging suspicion that whoever had come up with the ideas on it has been trying to discourage them from joining the Order. Instead of trying to give them something actually useful to do, she had a feeling it may have something to do with how they had ganged up on Mrs. Wesley a day ago. Now, Harry dear, Mrs. Whistler said admonishingly, I know you want to help, but you're still too young to join the order. Harry folded his arm, looking mutinous. There must be something we can do, even without joining the order. It's just others are out there risking their lives for us, and I am sitting here twiddling my thumbs. At least last year we could help clean out the ass. Not that it was fun, it was not much, but it was something. We are going completely mental, just sitting here, kept in the dark, Mom, Ron agreed. Just mental, agreed Fred. Complete bankers, countered George, loftily trying to channel Percy. Absolutely crazy. Out of minds, besides ourselves. Totally unhinged, absolutely lunatic, downright demented. That is enough, Molly declared, casting a sideway glance at the twins. Beside, continued Ray, Professor Dumbledore has been given me private lesson and tasks. I am already involved, even if not officially, and it is not a secret that who you know who already wants us dead. It's not like we're getting into any more danger. Hermione was impressed by how much Harry had changed since last year. He sounded calm and had even refrained from using the name of the Dark Wizard to keep the Wesley more comfortable. Please, Mrs. Wesley, there must be something we can do. Molly kept looking from one determined face to another, then sighed in defeat. All right, I will talk with the rest of the order, and we will try to come up with some task you can help with. And true to her word, she had supplied them with a list of calls, which unsurprisingly did not make any of them any happier. Wedding, digging up the garden at Grimwood Palace, building a greenhouse and planting potion ingredients. Ron read out disdainfully. Pass! Helping clean the order's new safe house, muttered Harry. It kind of makes me feel like I'm back at the Dursleys again. Pass! Helping a grid, make the thistral stables. Grimus Fred. Why would we need to help with that? Also hard pass. It is obvious, isn't it? Hermione asked. When the boys looked back at her with confused expression, she continued, Professor Dumbledore has been sending him on, out on mission regularly, hoping to contact other sentient magical creatures like giants, centaurs, and mere people. He must feel that Hagrid, being, Hagrid being a half-giant, gives him an advantage. So Hagrid probably does not have that much time to care for all the beasts at Hogwarts. Makes sense, I guess, Ron shrugged, returning to the list. Sorting a 16th century dark library on cursed artifact, confiscated from Malfoy Manor, Ron shuddered. 
This makes scooping your poop sound like fun. At least at Hogwood, we can use magic. Actually, that library is absolutely fascinating. Just imagine all we could learn from it. And Seussed, Hermione pulling the list in front of her. Not to be a downer, Hermione, but you really shouldn't touch any of those books. Ron said gently. That is more likely than not that there are woods, charms and curses on the books that prevent strangers from reading them. Also, if it comes from Malfoy, it probably has other spells. Well, against... Uh, Magalborn. Finished Hermione with a dejected sigh. I hate to say it, but Ronikins is right, added Fred. Yeah, one one has a point, George spied on it. I think only a wizard from a long-standing magical family should touch those. The twins exchange a glance, considering their small group. Not it, they cried together. They cried out together. No. What? No? Ron looked desperate. I don't want to be stuck in the library in the summer. The twins exchange a high five. Oh, the horror of being surrounded by books, said Hermione flatly. Harry's no good. Easy for you to laugh, Ron retorted. What the last option? Can't be any worse than this, Harry remarked with a grin. Helping Professor Snape through. She could not even finish reading potions when there was a chorus of, Not it! from Fred and George. Harry looked downright ashen. Bet you envy me and my book now, Harry? Ron caught it with glee. I do not want to be stuck with Snape in the dungeon, he said petulantly. Professor Snape, Hermione corrected him automatically, and neither do I. She had no problem with having to brew potions, but she did not feel like putting up with the constant and obvious disdain of the potions master either. There is only one way to decide this, Fred said, said solemnly. Forge, are you thinking what I am thinking? I think so, Gred. But a beer pong! They shouted in onion. Harry grinned. They all knew she was rubbish in any kind of ball game. No fair, protested Hermione. We shall do something that gives us an equal chance. We could draw straws, suggested George with a shrug. Whomever draws the short one will have the overgrown ban of the dungeon. Then we play butter. Better be pong for the fun of it, agreed Fred. I could agree to that, said Harry. You don't need my opinion, Ron said with a grin. I'll be safely sorting through horrible books. Actually, sorting through a library suddenly sounds like a lot of fun, remarked George. Who knows, we could use some new ideas for the jog shop. Fred did. I think everyone needs a chance to be included in the fun of extra Snape time. Even one one. Professor Snape. Hermione corrected him automatically. I get the straws, you get the butter beer. George asked Fred. Hermione was looking at the short straw in her hand, none too happily. Though she was not the only one disappointed in the distribution of the tasks. Come on, I really wanted to make out the stables, Ron begged. Switch with me? Then again, bring potion did not sound quite as bad as helping a grid. No can do, Rowan Akins, grinned Fred. It's an opportunity to collect all kinds of ingredients for the joke shop. You enjoy your books, the twins smoked at each other knowingly. Harry seemed downright delighted with his gardening duties. 
So, did someone promise us a butter bing pong? He asked. Hermione spent the rest of the afternoon immersed in a book she found in the Black Library. The most effective combination of curses and potion. While the boy kept playing butter beer pong. Even though the book was rather dark, she was amazed at the possibilities of potion triggered curses and charms triggered potions. She marked one of the pages she thought could be useful for the order. A potion that could be used for disguise and activated later with a wand. Polyjuice potion was great, of course, but it had a time limit, and it was suspicious to regularly drink from a little flak, flask of potions via in public. When the order meeting began, they attempted to eavesdrop on what was being said, but someone had set up some really effective words against extendable ears. She suspected Professor Dumbledore. Hermione had found a nifty little charm that would analyze Ward and make them visible. It was a complex, complex piece of work, and she was itching to learn more about how to layer them together. She had a strong suspicion that some of them were linked together and one would trigger another. Ron had found an eavesdropping charm somewhere, which he was eager to try. But Hermione talked him out of it. She was no expert on words, but from what she understood, one of the triggered charms would make licks grow from his ears. Well, this must have been a big event, Fred whispered as they watched the older members filled out from the kitchen. Nearly everyone is here. Moody, Tonks, Slurpin, even Snape, Ron added. They look rather a god. It must have been some bad news. Hermione tried to distract Snap, Harry said, grabbing her shoulder, ignoring her insistence of using a norific. I tried to get Sirius buttered up with some fire whiskey and see what I can get out of him. Last night, this time Snape caught me out on it and put an head to it. Uh, what should I say to Professor Snape? pondered Hermione. It was a summer holiday. They had no homework to write and no projects to work on. Well, you will be brewing potions with them. Try to keep him, keep him talking as long as you can. Green Harry, stomping down the stairs. He headed straight to Sirius, trusting she would do her part with a heavy feeling setting in her stomach. She headed towards Professor Snape. She was a Gryffindor, after all. Excuse me, Professor Snape, sir. He turned toward her, looking down his long nose. What do you want, Miss Granger? I don't have time to dawdle around, he remarked impatiently. Well, we asked Mrs. Wesley if there was anything we could do for the order to help. She started to explain, wringing her hands. I'm sure she will be able to provide you with all a task that fits your capabilities, like dusting shelves. He interrupted with a sneer. Hermione blushed in anger. Mrs. Wesley let us know that you needed assistance brewing some potions for the order, sir. I am more than capable. I wanted to offer my help, Professor. You sound very sure of yourself, Miss Granger. What makes you think you are up to the task? He asked, lifting an eyebrow at her. She had always found gesture impressive and made herself a mental not to try to learn. According to Hogwarts archives, I have the highest old scores in potion in the last 18 years, she said, pulling herself to her full length. That would have been more impressive if she had been taller, or if she had that nifty eyebrow trick. She conveniently forgot to mention that Snape had a much higher score and currently held the record for the last 52 years 
still. Miss Granger, I am working on complex potions and projects, he said condescendingly. Not simple little brews a third year student's could concoct. You have yet to show any special aptitude for potion making. Hermione had to, surpre to suppress the urge to shoot back that the standard of her potion education was harshly her own fault. But even when Snape couldn't take points or assign attention, this did not seem like the smartest move. She would not let her temper get the better of her. What was the most complex potion you have successfully brewed? The potion master had demanded. The answer was Polyjuice Potion in her second year. It was way beyond mute level, but for obvious reasons she could not name that one. She shooed on her lips, thinking she could not name something made in class. It would not impress her professor much. Well, I did make Wolf's Band Potion from profes for Professor Lupin last month. She said eventually. He said it did help him a great deal, even if it was not quite as effective as what you brewed for, for him while he was teaching at Hogwarts. Naturally, if you just followed a recipe from a book, he drawled. Potions that are affected by the changes in the moon cycle, such as wolf ban, need the shimmering time and steering count adjusted using an astronomy calculation. Hermione wished she had parchment and quill with her to take notes. Care to guess why? The question felt like a test. She creased her eyebrows in concentration, eager to puzzle out the answer for him herself. If the moon has an effect on the potion, the effect will change with the position and distance, she mused. And the relative position of the moon would be influenced by the other planets, their gravitation having a larger or smaller effect. I would guess the portion of the s position of the sun would be the most important, but the closer s the closer planets could pull the moon slightly in one way or another. This would mean a longer or shorter shimmering time to balance out the effect of the sun. Correct, in a sense, if overly simplified, he drawled. That sounded like a high praise coming from the potion master. And the steering would contour the effect of the other planets? In a sense, yes. Hermione's arts leapt with joy at her sudden understanding. She had always loved the intoxicating feeling of discovery when pieces of knowledge fell into their places. Like pieces of a puzzle. This would also explain why fertilizer potion recipes contain such a wide range of different shimmering times and stirring requirements, or the seaweed potion, which is tied to the sea, which in turn is... Indeed, he cut into her musing. Excited, Hermione continued. Please, sir, would you show me how to do the adjustment calculation? She asked girly. She wanted to try false ban again, hoping to get it right this time. Are you this eager to spend your days locked up with me in the dungeon? He took a step closer to her, trying to intimidate her by looming over a smaller form. She had grown an inch since last year, but the potion professors were still more than a head taller, and she had to strain her neck to look up at him. She did not give him the satisfaction of backing up, though. I know you do not particularly enjoy my company, sir, and so did Hermione, trying to sound more self-assured and calmer than she was. However, if I can make you work faster or more efficient, even if only by cutting ingredients. 
it does help the odor. From this close-up, she could see dark circles forming under his eyes. She realized that he must have been under a lot of pressure with teaching, spying and bring for the order and the hospital wing. He must have been exhausted. If she could give him a bit more time for sleep, it would already help his chance of survival as a spy. I will be happy to help however I can, sir. When he did not react, she added softly. Please, sir. Very well, Miss Granger, relented Professor Snape with a sigh. Hermione was not quite sure how she went from offering to help to practically begging to be allowed to peel roots for him. He was such a master Slytherin. You can assist me. Be in front of the potion lab here in the dungeons tomorrow morning, eight o'clock sharp. His eyes travelled over her form, from head to toe, and Hermione fought the urge not to blush under his critical gaze. And do something with that rat's nest, you call her, as we do not want accidental ingredients. She did read Anna at the mention of her unimaginable hair. Wear something with tight sleeves to prevent your clothes from dipping into potions, ingredients, and close shoes. Open sandals like those are an invitation to an accident. Yes, sir. He nodded and turned, storming away with his ropes billowing after him before she could say so much as good night. Hermione was rooting around her trunk, trying to decide what to wear to the potion lab. Ron was laying on her bed, playing with Chudley Cannon's yo-yo obscendimentedly. Harry was sitting on the edge of the bed, excited. Professor Dumbledore will be taking me on a trip, explained Harry with a grin, dangling his feet. We are searching for this next Orcrux. He will pick me up tomorrow at night and drop Ron off at the library to sort books. Hermione folded a pair of jeans and set it next to her trunk. Yeah, that is all I am good for, sorting dusty books. Ron answered bitterly, scratching the paint off his yo-yo. Actually, Harry said, turning toward his friends with a serious face, Dumbledore hopes to find a new rare book and Horcruxes in the collection, something about tracking them down, which will be a pretty huge help. He shot an apologetic, an apologetic look at Hermione. He did say that it was rather unfortunate that you could not help Hermione, not safely anyway, and if we had to break all the woods before you could take a look, it would take a decade to go through with them. He turned back to Ron. So what you will be doing won't be just or only, but it will be essential. It is still research, whined Ron. But without the previous bitterness in his voice, Hermione rolled her eyes while folding a couple of tank tops, putting them on the ever-growing no pile. Research is essential, Ronald, she shouted. Without research, there is no innovation, no moving forward, no new fast broomsticks, no new Quidditch maneuvers, no new magical jokes, no novel sweets. No, okay, okay, I get it he said, cutting off her tirade. But doing research is still boring. I never understand how you can sit over a chessboard for hours trying to come up with a new strategy to find, your find research boring. She shook her head. Research is like the game strategy of life, the key to unlocking a mystery, the answer to questions you never dreamed to ask, you never thought you needed to know. Each book is filled with possibilities and looking over them can fill you with anticipation that maybe this will be the one. And when you find a reference to what you are looking for, a clue, the excited jump of your heart fills you with adrenaline. 
makes your hand tremble and sends your mind spinning toward the solution. When pieces fall into their places and you suddenly see the whole picture, both filled with nervousness and hope and... Whoa, Hermione. You sound like Snape. Ron sat up, looking at her with a grimace. The delicate power of liquid that creeps through human veins, bewitching the mind and snarring the senses, thwarted Harry, suppressing a laugh. If he is in love with his cauldron, Hermione is in love with her books. But you can't let Gally marry a book, Ron said with fake worry on his face. You might have to look for a wizard with a publishing company instead, he teased. Hermione threw a pair of rolled-up socks at his head. Stop acting like we're allergic to book, she laughed. You will not get cooties from spending a few days in a library. No, but I may die of boredom, Creamy Strown. I don't think it will be that bad, Harry offered. You would be working with Lupin. He is pretty cool and relaxed. He even allowed me to have some fire whiskey last time we had a chat. Nah, that will be cool. Also, it could be worse, continued Harry. You could be stuck in a room with Snape instead, dissembling horned frogs or something. I did not think I would ever say this, Harry, but you can make research sound positively delightful, Ron Green. I really do not think it could be that bad. Hermione threw a long sleeve tight pullover in the bed. At least he cannot dock points and give out detentions outside the school. That does not really make the greasy get in less crazy scary, disagreed Ron with a dark scowl. I am with Ron on this one, Hermione. He only needs to look at you that way to destroy you. I sure as hell am glad he is on our side in this war. Professor Snape isn't a git. It's just... <sighs> she was not quite sure how to defend the potion's professor and shrugged. Besides, this is a great opportunity for us to learn. Well, better you than me, Harry grinned. I would rather face Voldemort again than take extra potions classes. I think sooner or later you are going to get your wish, pal. Ron clapped him on the shoulder. Did you manage to get anything out of Sirius? Hermione asked, choosing another long-sleeved shirt for the brewing and started to fold her clothes back into the trunk. Not as much as I would have liked, Harry sighed. There was an accident in the Ministry of Magic at the Department of Mysteries. It was a big hush-up. They claim it was just a magical explosion, but Sirius thinks the theaters have stolen something and destroyed the room in their wake to make it look as if whatever they took was also annihilated. Does he know what it was? asked Ron, throwing the rolled-up sock back at Hermione. If he does, he isn't telling me, but to be honest, I do not think he does. I only... I think only Professor Dumbledore's in one or two order member in our net. You don't think it might be another prophecy, do you? wondered Ron aloud. Unlikely, replied Harry, shaking his head. For one, if we destroy thousands of them, as another, when I told Professor Dumbledore about the prophecy that Trella. Tre tre I can't pronounce her name, uh, Trelane made at the end of our third year. Hermione snorted at the mention of the divination teacher. He said it was her second real prophecy, and that there are others here around. They took something else. But what? I don't think even Rufus Scrimgore know what the inspicable are doing, remarked Ron. Either way, I'm not going to take off the ministry against like last year, Harry shuddered. Hermione absent-mindedly traced the scar that Dohalev had given her. I would just have to trust Professor Dumbledore that he does know what is going on and that he will let me know what I need to know when I need it. Hermione did not say it out loud but she hoped that the master had also learned from his mistakes.
End of chapter 1